Good evening. Good evening, everybody. I'll just invite you as we kind of come from Mass, as we sort of gather, uh, hopefully I have something interesting for you to talk about, but maybe we'll just take a moment here just to kind of gather ourselves in this space. A little different than the space upstairs, but also a sacred space. The Lord Jesus tells us in Scripture, we're two or three or however many are here or gathered, he's here in our midst, okay? And so let's just take a moment. We're gathering here in Christ. And so let's invite the Lord. He's certainly here with us, but sometimes our eyes and more importantly, our hearts need to be more open to that. So we'll just take a pause and just kind of enter into this moment and see whether or not I have anything good to say to you tonight, okay? So we'll just invite the Lord into our moment tonight. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in each one of us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created and you'll renew the face of the earth. Lord God, we ask you to send abundant blessings on these young men and women here upon their leaders and catechists and that this evening, you know, this talk and the conversation that will come afterwards can be beneficial for them, but also that everything we do may redound to your greater glory and build up your kingdom here at this parish and throughout the world. And we ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So friends, the topic that I'm talking about tonight has to do with life and the dignity of life. And so I'd like you to think about a couple of questions as I'm talking and then carry these questions with you to your conversation afterward, okay? When you kind of break up in your smaller groups at the tables. So a couple of questions. So we know that the church talks a lot about the dignity of life, the dignity of the human person, right? We hear a lot about that, probably here, We read a lot about it. The catechism of the church talks a lot about it. And so anything, something, anytime something is talked about a lot, it must be pretty important, right? So first question, why does the church care so much about life? Why is that such a topic of importance for the church? So think about that this evening. Why does the church put so much importance on the issue of life? Second question. We know that we gather here in the early days of uh, 2024. We just concluded the Christmas season, right? We just came to the end of the Christmas season. It's not just the one day, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. It's not even the eight days, the octave. It's a whole season. But that season has come to a close. But the second question relates to Christmas, the celebration that we've just concluded. Jesus taking on flesh being born, what does that have to say about what God thinks about human life? Unborn life, but also life at all stages. What does Christmas, the birth of Jesus, have to say about what God, and Jesus in particular, has to say about life? That's your second question. Third question, how can I take, in your everyday life, going to school this week, on your sports fields and in your other places that you'll go, how can I take this message that life is important? How can I take that into all the places that I'm going to go? Okay, because every one of you are going to go to places that I'm not going to go this week. Your teachers and catechists aren't going to go. But you have a role to take what you've learned. Hopefully that homily upstairs, you know, meant a little something. Maybe these words this evening will mean a little something. How can I, in a concrete way, not just, oh, I'll be nice, that's important, but it's not enough. How do I take what I'm going to learn in this talk and in our conversation tonight, how can you take that with you into school this week and beyond? So those three questions, okay? Maybe consider those, think about those, and then you can break them open a little bit when you gather at your tables afterwards. So far, so good? Looks like everybody's still awake, so I better take advantage of that and keep talking, okay? So as I said at the beginning, the church does say a lot about life. Now, sometimes we can think that that's sort of the more narrow topic of pro-life in the sense of abortion, right? We know a lot about uh, what the church has to say about abortion. And this Friday in Washington, D.C., there'll be the March for Life. Is anybody from the parish going down for the March for Life? Has anybody done that before? Okay. Yeah, some people in the back. So I lived in Washington, D.C. for four years when I was studying to be a priest, and so we would go down there, 
And it was often as cold as this, pretty brutal to be out, but you would see thousands of people, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of people from all over the country coming to Washington, D.C. Not all of them are Catholic, but coming to stand up for life. That's a pretty big witness, right? That's something pretty important. But the church doesn't see life as only an unborn baby. The church sees life from the very beginning, when a baby is conceived, all the way up until a person passes away at the end of life. We respect life from the very beginning to the very end. Because it's a gift from God. Life is a gift. Sometimes we fall into the trap or the mistake of thinking, my life is mine. And I can do with it what I want. Now, God gives us free will. He trusts us to think about, how do I serve him? Like I said upstairs in the homily, what do you want me to do for you, Lord? What mission have you created me for? How do you want me to reflect your face and your love in this world? And he has a way for each one of you to do that. Not just when you're older, but even now. But... It's important to know that life is a gift from God. It's not fully up to us what we do, okay? It's not fully up to us to abuse ourselves. Sometimes people do very dangerous things. Sometimes people abuse their bodies with drugs or with alcohol or with other things that are not helpful for us and not good for us. We really don't have a right to do that because our body and our life is a gift from God. And so we have to use that well. Because it's through the body that we encounter other people. It's through the body that we encounter the sacraments. You receive the Eucharist. If you've been confirmed already, or if you're getting close to that, you receive that oil on your forehead. You hear the words of the priest in absolution when you go to confession. It's through the physical world that we receive God in the sacraments. And so our bodies have to be important because God created our bodies, not to be abused or not to be used in bad ways, but to be used to receive his grace and to help share that grace with other people. And so the church, the Catholic church believes that even a baby at the very first moment of conception, when that baby is conceived, that life is a gift. Even that person later in life who maybe has a disability a handicap, maybe mentally, maybe physically, maybe something else, that person's life has dignity. Even an older person at the very end of life, maybe their body is so worn out from many years of being on earth, maybe their minds are failing, that person has dignity because that is a beautiful creation of God. No matter whether it's a tiny baby, born or unborn, or somebody at the very end of life, that life has meaning and dignity. And we never can throw that away. Now, some of us might think, but who would want to do that? Who would even consider throwing that away? Unfortunately, there are a lot of people in our world who don't see through the eyes of the church. They don't see the dignity of the baby, of the handicapped person, of the ill person, or even of the elderly. And sometimes, in some places, they say, just move that along. Have an abortion if that baby is not convenient. Put that person, tuck them away. Some now, some people that are sick need some help. They need to be in a nursing home. Or people with problems sometimes need to be in a hospital or some other place. But we don't want to just tuck them away and get rid of them. We don't want to forget about them. Sometimes they need help and so they can't be at a home, but we don't want to think that they don't have meaning, that their lives aren't a gift to us and to the church and to the world. Sometimes people at the end of their lives, when they get very elderly, they feel like they can't contribute anymore. Maybe they can't come to church anymore. They can't volunteer. They can't work. They can't do the things they spent a lifetime doing, and even they feel My life doesn't matter. I'm no good to anyone anymore. How can you and I, maybe we have people like this in our family, your grandparents or other people, maybe neighbors, who they're feeling like their lives just don't matter anymore. 
but the Lord is here to tell us that they do. And he can help tell them through us. Okay? So there are many ways in which the church invites us to love other people. To tell them that their life is a gift. A gift to us and a gift to the world. But sometimes, God, we can't always hear his voice. It's not always as clear as what Samuel heard in the first reading. It's not always that voice, hey, here's what you should be doing. Here's where I want you to go. Here's what I want you to do. Sometimes, but rarely, more often God uses prayer and some time in silent prayer to show us how we can be, you know, his love for other people. Because Jesus ascended into heaven, right? We remember that part in the Gospels where Jesus died on the cross. He rose from the dead. And then he hung out with his friends for a while just to prove, hey, I'm really here. I'm really alive. But after a point, he needed to go back to heaven. It was important for him to ascend, to go back to God the Father. And so he said, I, in my physical body, am going back. I'll remain. I'll be with you through the sacraments. I'll be with you through the church. I'll send the Holy Spirit. But I have no hands or feet, or voice, or heart, now, in this world, except yours. And so I think an important task for us, a job for us, is to be the hands and feet and voice and heart of Jesus. To tell people, you matter. Your life is a gift. So if anyone here, when you go to school this week, And there's that kid in school that maybe isn't as popular, isn't as cool, isn't as likable. Maybe they're new. Maybe they're weird. There are weird people out there, right? We can be honest about that. But is their life still a gift? It's hard to see that, maybe. It's hard to see, like, I don't want to spend time with this person. I don't want to do that. But maybe the Lord's inviting you to be his hands and feet and voice and heart in this world for that person who maybe doesn't feel like anybody else cares. Maybe some of you here know somebody who falls into that category of not fitting in or not feeling loved, and maybe they just seem strange, but maybe it's because there's a big hole in their heart because they haven't felt God's love. Now, I'm not saying it's a lovey-dovey, you give them a big hug, you don't have to do that but it might be an opportunity with a kind word or inviting them to sit with you in the lunch table or some small way of being the love of Jesus. That's something that we can do each and every day of our lives. We don't have to wait for a big occasion or invitation. It's something that might unfold for you this week in school or on the sports field or wherever else you might find yourself. Maybe even here tonight. Maybe even here in this youth group moment, or in future ones. And so, the church sees life as very important. If we're part of the church, then we're invited to see that too. We're invited to see a baby as a great gift, unborn, and then to do what we can to support those parents after this child is born. To support those people around us that maybe don't quite fit in. And to see people who are sick, maybe mentally sick, maybe physically sick, or maybe old and frail, as still having something to contribute to this world. Some of you have grandparents that are still with you, maybe even local, such that you can spend time with them. Take advantage of that opportunity to learn from them, to listen to them. Old people love to talk. They love to talk. (laughs) But do we take time to listen? Because old people love to talk, sometimes because they're lonely, sometimes because of any number of reasons, but sometimes because they've lived a long life and they have a lot of wisdom and they can't just take their head and put it on your shoulders. So they want to share what they know and help you to learn. Sometimes they've made mistakes they don't want you to learn. They don't want you to have to make them to learn. They want you to learn from what they tell you. They've seen a lot and we can learn from them. And you can bring joy to them by sincerely listening and loving and being part of their lives. So 
Maybe that's long enough. Maybe I don't want to lose your attention. But I'll invite you to remember those questions that I spoke of in the beginning. The church talks a lot about life, so why is it so important? That's the first question. If we talk so much about it, if this was worth making it a topic for this conversation tonight, why is it so important? Why do you think it is? Two, why does Jesus taking on flesh matter when it comes to life? When it comes to being born as a baby, not born as a strong man, not just he came down from heaven, but he was born weak and dependent, like all of us were, as a baby. Does that speak something about life and the importance of life, the importance of a child? And then the third question, how can we take what we believe about life and live that this week and beyond? So, so far so good. Maybe I'll kind of leave it at that. Uh, do we have any questions? Maybe not, but any questions before we let you break up into the next, uh, next part of the evening? Oh, I, I never got to that point. I just kind of thought more in the general sense of being an attorney, yeah, and then, uh, but never quite got to that point of narrowing it down, yeah. She asked what kind, I mentioned in my homily about becoming an attorney, a lawyer, uh, or a priest, and she asked what kind of attorney, but I never really got to that point of narrowing that down, but uh, yeah. Anything else? Any other questions? Seems like everybody's still awake, so <laughs> that's good enough. Good enough. Good? All right, very good. Well, maybe we'll just put a comma there. Uh, maybe we'll just ask the Lord to send his blessed mother our way this evening. We'll conclude with this Hail Mary, and then we'll invite you to, uh, to receive instructions for the next part of your evening, okay? So let's just remain quiet. We invite the Blessed Mother to embrace us with her love this evening. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening. Okay. Thank you.